Hi, this is Pradeep Sharma. I'm Deepesh Kumar. I'm Aniket Rane. I'm Tejbir Singh. And we are here to present our Big Data Final Project. Hi, this is Pradeep Sharma and I will start our Big Data Final Project presentation. We named our working website as the best source. During the demonstration, we will take a deep dive into the architecture, the components used to build this project, the connectivity and other factors. We have created a fully functional end-to-end e-commerce application. We had divided the development activities among us and created everything on our local machines. After that, we have integrated all the different modules built. Let's start with the different components of the application. We have used uh, MongoDB as the backend of our application. For such system, we, we have uh, used Amazon Elasticsearch service. For Cache system, we have used Redis Cache. For CDN, we have used CloudFront, which is again a CDN service of Amazon Web Services, and Node.js as the application server for the application. So this is the architecture of our application. As, as mentioned earlier, we use uh, MongoDB, which is a NoSQL DB, and we implemented Elasticsearch for uh, its full text search and auto search features. And we have used uh, Redis Cache to fetch top products for the different categories for our application. And to integrate these services, we have used Node.js as the application, application server. We have uh, also used Amazon CloudFront as the CDN, which stores the cache version of its uh, content in multiple geographical locations uh, and in the final uh, the target was to build a cloud application so we deployed all these services on amazon web services i'll hand over to dipesh to explain the role and working of the mongodb in our website thank you hello everyone my name is dipesh kumar and i'll be explaining you the database that i have used in my application which is mongodb we have used MongoDB as it is a document-oriented database and uh, the, the, the data that we have used for this application is in JSON format and even MongoDB is a, is a uh, NoSQL database which stores uh, JSON-like data. So this is our data in JSON format. Here you can see that we have fields like ASIN, uh, which is the Amazon identifier, description, product title, price, categories. Uh, this data is from Amazon and uh, we have performed uh, web scrapping to fetch this data. This is our uh, web scrapping code that we have used to scrap the data. Here we are using uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon uh, API and PyMongo to establish connection to the Mongo client. Uh, so here we are using our Mongo instance which is, uh, which is deployed on AWS. And here after scrapping the data we are inserting in the mongo uh, in the mongo instance so we uh, we are scrapping for different categories of data so here in the ec2 management console on the amazon web services we, are, we can see that we have two instances running so we have our node uh, node.js uh, application server which is uh, basically used for in, uh, integrating different amazon web services that we are using in our application and we also have our mongo instance uh, deployed on the ec2 um, ec2 amazon web service so uh, when you click on it you can see uh, that this is our uh, dns uh, host address which we are using to connect to our mongo uh, instance and uh, uh, on clicking monitoring, we can see various uh, statistics uh, like the uh, hits on the MongoDB and different and uh, the utilization of the MongoDB. So uh, here you can see that uh, we are using T2 micro uh, instance type, which uh, which basically tells us that we are using uh, the Mongo instance with uh, 500 uh, GB, 500 MB of memory. Now let me show you the uh, database uh, database that we have created on Mongo instance using uh, Robo Mongo client. So here, uh, uh, here uh, you can see that we have our uh, AWS uh, s connection set up over here, and this is our AWS uh, uh, host address that we got from our in from our instance. This is a uh, shopping database that we have created and here we have the collections 
product and this is our data uh, and um, this is our data and how it looks like on the Mongo database. Here in the uh, app.js file, uh, we are um, importing the Mongoose library. Mongoose is a client that we are using to establish connection to the uh, MongoDB instance on EC2. So uh, we are using mongoose.connect and here we are using the in host address that we got from the EC2 instance. Next, uh, next, uh, this is a website, and here we are, uh, and the uh, top products list that we see over here is uh, coming from that is cash. But when we click on any of these products, uh, it takes to our uh, main product page wherein we get all the details about our product. And this, all these details are coming from the uh, MongoDB. And the, the route for this page is this uh, load product and then the ISN identifier, which identifies that particular product. So uh, the code for the code for the uh, MongoDB connection is uh, given in the uh, route file for uh, route file uh, for this uh, load product URL. So in index.js, a request for our product comes. Uh, we get our um, the identifier and the result uh, variable, and we store it in product product ID variable. Next, we uh, query MongoDB using find method of Mongoose, and the result are retrieved in the product products of, uh, in the products variable, which is nothing but a JSON file, and then this JSON file is rendered to the UI using rest dot res.render function. So that's it for the MongoDB implementation. Next, the Elasticsearch would be explained by TageB. Thanks, Deepesh. Uh, hi, everyone. I am TageB Singh Bhatia, and I'll be giving you a short explanation of the Elasticsearch part uh, that I have completed for this project. So we get into the Elasticsearch service dashboard uh, of the AWS. Here we have uh, created the domain shopping, which uses the Elasticsearch version 5.1 and is uh, searching among the 282 documents that we have provided. Uh, it has a free storage space of 7.24 gigs and the configuration state says it is active. Here we can see the cluster configuration that we'll be using later on in our code to connect to AWS. Down here we can see the number of nodes that we're using are one and the active primary shards are six. Let's click on the indices tab now. In the shopping indices, we can see that the count uh, of the documents is 281. The size in bytes is 1.23 MB and the query total that we have performed until now is 180. By clicking on the products tab here, we can see the different fields of the documents on which the search can be performed. Here in the code, we can clearly see that uh, we have loaded the Elasticsearch library. And later on uh, in the variable client, we can see that we have defined uh, all our configurations to connect to AWS. Uh, now let's scroll below to find the module where the actual search is performed. So this is a module that we were looking for. And you can see a variable query, which is basically the keyword that uh, we'll be entering in the website to search for a product. Using this keyword, we'll be forming a search params search query that is built on the index shopping and has a type of product. It will basically be searching for the word, for the keyword query uh, in the fields description and title. The fuzziness uh, is set to auto. That is because we want to have the fuzzy search option on in our Elasticsearch service. In the client.search module that we see here, 
the search params query is uh, searched upon and the result is stored in res variable uh, this variable is later used to form chunks of three that are used to render on the website uh, that's all for the elastic search code part uh, now let's have a uh, demonstration of the elastic search on the website so on the website um, we can see that we have a search bar where we can type a keyword and search for the product so when we type men we see all these different products similarly uh, suppose if I have uh, made some mistake while typing the keyword Let's see what we get for GAM. Uh, we get all the search results for the word GAME, that is game, even when we type uh, just GAM. That is the fuzzy search demonstration of Elasticsearch service. Uh, that's all for the Elasticsearch part. And now Aniket Rane will explain for the Elastic Cache part of our project. Hi, I'm Aniket Rane and I'll be explaining you about the cache implementation in our web application. Cache is used for high availability. It is an in-memory data storage. Thus, it is fast and hence it is used to store top products to show on home page of our e-commerce web application. In this application, we have used a Redis cache. Uh, if you go to AWS uh, Service Console, you can see Elastic Cache. In this elastic cache, we have used a Redis uh, cluster and we have created one cluster called best store cache uh, where mode is Redis, number of nodes are one and uh, node type is cache.t2.micro which gives us 500 MB of space. Uh, then let's go to EC2 management console. In this EC2 management console, uh, we have, uh, as you can see, we have selected a security group uh, default um, uh, this is the description of the security group uh, if you go to inbound you can see the protocol and the type of the security group uh, the type of the security group is all traffic uh, this all traffic means uh, it allows our website to be accessed from anywhere to connect this redis cache uh, with our web application, with, we have used Redis library in node.js. So let me just go to this node.js. As you can see here, we have uh, imported this uh, Redis library and we have created a client uh, of this Redis library where we have, uh, set, uh, we have set our authentication. Now, uh, as you can see over here router.get method in this method you uh, you can see slash over here that means it's a uh, it, this code is for home page uh, in this home page we are uh, taking the data into json format and we are passing these hash keys cell phone accessories tv videos and video games because we wanted to show um, products of these uh, categories uh, on uh, the home page of our website the top products of these categories so we are uh, taking the data into json format and then uh, we are uh, creating uh, objects and uh, we are splitting them into four because uh, on the home page of our website uh, you will see uh, top four products uh, first so we are just splitting them by this for loop and then uh, in this uh, res dot render you can see we are pushing them to the home page so this is the home page of our web application and as you can see the top products are uh, shown in a group of four as I explained to you before so the next part a uh, CDN will be explained by Pradeep thank you 
Thanks, Aniket. Uh, I'll show the CDN functionality used in this application. CloudFront is the CDN services in AWS. A CDN stores uh, a cache version of its content in multiple geographical locations, also known as points of presence or POPs. Each POP uh, contains a number of caching services responsible for content delivery to the visitors within the proximities. In cloud uh, implementation of CDN, we have used two components of AWS. Uh, first is Amazon S3 bucket. Second is Amazon uh, CloudFront. If you go to uh, S3, we can see that uh, there are already existing buckets. Uh, uh, we have created a Spark Zeppelin uh, demo bucket uh, for our CDN and place our application logo that is the best store logo.png. To see uh, in the in this bucket, uh, to see the further implementation, uh, let's uh, go to the uh, CloudFront management console. Yeah, so here we can see that we have uh, already made one uh, CloudFront distribution domain uh, with the default name this and uh, we are using this for our image distribution uh, so let's focus on the fact that the origin of this distribution in this is spark zeppelin bucket itself in which our image lies let's see it's uh, working uh, for that we have to go to our uh, application uh, and uh, just click on this image click on inspect so yeah so we, here we can see that uh, the the image source uh, it is coming from the cloud front uh, distributing domain which is referring the s3 bucket so this is so that was our end-to-end -end functional video hope you enjoyed the content thanks for watching this video have a nice day Ed.